Part one: Listen and choose the correct answers. Let's do an example. Number one: Listen to the teacher. For the next few weeks, we are going to learn how a seed grows into a plant. I'd like you to plant your own seed at home, observe it, and take notes for ten days. Now answer this question: What did the teacher tell the students to do? The answer is B. Did you see the tick? Now you do it. Number two, listen to the teacher. I'm going to take Alex to the nurse's office because he is feeling unwell. Please stay silent while you read chapter two and write down its key points. What did the teacher tell the students to do? Number three, listen to the mother. Hey, Dave! I just found Robert's DVD on the bookshelf behind your books. You borrowed it from him months ago. You should give it back to him when you see him at school tomorrow. What did the mother tell her son to do? Number four. Listen to the teacher. Before we enter the theater, I would like everyone to set your cell phones to silent mode. We shouldn't make any noise while the movie is on. What did the teacher tell the students to do? Number five. Listen to the mother. Oh dear. You've cut yourself, Jake. Go to the sink to clean your finger. I will get a bandage for you right now. What did the mother tell her son to do? Number six. Listen to the teacher. Who has finished their painting? Please stick it on the board so that everyone can see your work. What did the teacher tell the students to do? Number seven. Listen to the mother. Oh, you're back from dance class. I had your computer fixed this afternoon. Please turn it on and see if it's working properly or not. What did the mother tell her daughter to do? Part two: Listen to a conversation and answer the question. Let's do an example. Number eight: Listen to the conversation between two classmates. Listen for the answer to this question: How did Sam feel about the giant slide at first? Did you enjoy the visit to the water park, Sam? Very much. I haven't been there before. Which part of the water park did you like best? I loved the giant slide. It was scary at first, but later I found it to be so fun. Really? I want to try it too. How did Sam feel about the giant slide at first? A. It was fun. B. It was scary. C. It was terrible. The answer is B. Did you see the tick? Now you do it. Number nine. Listen to the conversation between the girl and the boy. Listen for the answer to this question: What color is a polar bear's skin? Did you watch the documentary on TV last night? No. What was it about? It was about polar bears. It was very informative. I learned that a polar bear has black skin. They just look white because they have white fur. Oh, 
That's an interesting thing to know. What color is a polar bear's skin? A. White. B. Gray. C. Black. Number 10. Listen to the conversation between the boy and the woman. Listen for the answer to this question. Where's the boy going? Excuse me, I'm looking for the botanical garden. Do you know how to get there? Yes, it's only about four kilometers from here. You can take bus number 12 there. It stops right in front of the botanical garden. Sounds convenient. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Where's the boy going? A. To the train station. B. To the convenience store. C. To the botanical garden. Number 11. Listen to the conversation between two classmates. Listen for the answer to this question. What is the boy going to write about? Hello, Jack. Have you decided on which landmark to write about for your essay? Hi, Jill. Not really. I want to write about the Golden Gate Bridge. But nearly half the class is writing about it. So I'm still thinking about it. What about you? I'm writing about the Statue of Liberty. By the way, I found a lot of information about the Empire State Building. Maybe you could do that one. The Empire State Building sounds like a good idea. I'll write about that. Thanks, Jill. What is the boy going to write about? A. The Golden Gate Bridge B. The Statue of Liberty C. The Empire State Building Number 12. Listen to the conversation between the girl and the boy. Listen for the answer to this question. What is Wendy going to buy? Hi, Wendy. Why are you waiting by the school gate? Hi, Dave. I'm waiting for my sister. She's picking me up today. We are going to the shopping mall to buy a birthday present for my mom. I see. Have fun. I'm going to the bookstore to buy some comic books. See you tomorrow. What is Wendy going to buy? A. A birthday present for her sister. B. A birthday present for her mom. C. A comic book. Number 13. Listen to the conversation between the girl and her mother. Listen for the answer to this question. When does Luciana's music class start? Mom, can you please drive me to my music class? It starts at 6 p.m. In 30 minutes. Sure, Luciana. Get ready quickly. I will wait for you in the car. Thank you, Mom. When does Luciana's music class start? A. 5.30 p.m. B. 6 o'clock p.m. C. 6.30 p.m. Number 14. Listen to the conversation between two classmates. Listen for the answer to this question. What is the boy going to do? I'm hungry. You just had lunch an hour ago. Since I started playing sports, I have been hungry all the time. I feel like I could eat a horse right now. Yeah, you need more energy to do sports. Please go grab some snacks to eat before practice starts. What is the boy going to do? A. Have his lunch. B. Play some sports. C. Get some snacks. Part 3. 
Listen to the phone message and answer the question. Let's do an example. Number 15. Listen to the phone message. Mom, are you home? I forgot to bring my tennis racket for P.E. this afternoon. Can you please bring it to school for me before 2 p.m.? Thank you so much. What did the girl ask her mom to do? A. Buy her a tennis racket. B. Bring her a tennis racket. C. Take her to her P.E. lesson. The answer is B. Did you see the tick? Now you do it. Number 16. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Colin. This is Daniel. I'm going fishing in the river this Sunday morning with my dad. Do you want to join us? Call back and let me know. Where are Daniel and his dad going fishing? A. In the stream. B. In the river. C. In the pond. Number 17. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Susanna. It's Betty. What are you doing this Sunday evening? I have two tickets for a comedy show. If you don't have any plans yet, would you like to go with me? It's from 7 to 9 o'clock. Please call me back soon. Why did Betty call? A. To ask Susanna to buy her two tickets. B. To invite Susanna to see a comedy show. C. To tell Susanna how long the comedy show lasts. Number 18. Listen to the phone message. Hello, Miss Murphy. It's Lucy. I'm supposed to have a singing lesson with you this Friday morning at 8 o'clock. However... My family decided to go on a trip. We are leaving tomorrow and returning on Sunday evening. Can we reschedule the lesson? Thank you! Why does Lucy want to reschedule her singing lesson? A. Because she is going on a trip with her family. B. Because she is sick. C. Because she needs to take an exam. Number 19. Listen to the phone message. Hello, Mr. Taylor. I'm Julie. I saw your rental ad in the newspaper today. Have you rented your store yet? If it's still available, I want to rent it. Please call me at 555-383-4710 or send an email to julieharris twenty one at gmail.com. Thank you. What did Mr. Taylor advertise for rent? A. A house. B. An apartment. C. A store. Number 20. Listen to the phone message. Hello, Mom. School is over, but Jack asked me to go to the book fair with him. The fair is held right at the school library, and I may find some good books there. I'll be home at 7 p.m. See ya! Where is the book fair? A. In the city center. B. At the school library. C. At a park. Number 21. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Daniel. It's Kevin. You told me about the basketball game this Sunday. I want to watch it, but forgot its time and location. Please call me back when you get this message. Thank you. What does Kevin want to do this Sunday? A. Play a basketball game. B. Watch a basketball game. C. Buy a new basketball. Part 4. Listen and answer the questions. 
Listen to the story about a boy named Billy. Where did I leave it? Billy wondered while he was searching for his puppet. It was the puppet that he needed for this Sunday's storytelling session. Billy and his friends gathered in the evening of the last Sunday of each month to tell stories with their puppets. Billy already had an idea about what story to tell, but he couldn't find his puppet anywhere. It wasn't on the sofa, under the bed, or on the bookshelf. Billy emptied his toy box in his room. All of his toys were in there, but not the puppet. Billy continued looking in every room for almost an hour, and yet his puppet was nowhere to be found. Now the house was a mess, and Billy was tired of searching for his toy. Later, his mom came back home from the supermarket. Oh dear! Why is your room so messy, Billy? I've been looking for my puppet, Mom. I need it for my storytelling session this Sunday. Billy answered. When did you last see it? Mom asked. I can't remember. Billy almost cried. Okay, get some rest and tidy up your room, she said to Billy. After a while, Billy heard his mom call out. Come over here, Billy. Look what I've found. Billy immediately ran to his mom and saw his wooden puppet at the bottom of the laundry basket. Thank you, mom. I will be more organized. I don't want to waste time looking for toys anymore. Billy said. Now answer the questions. Number twenty-two. What was Billy looking for? A. His puppet. B. His storybook. C. His toy box. Number twenty-three. How did Billy feel when searching for his toy? A. Scared. B. Bored. C. Tired. Number twenty-four. What did Mom tell Billy to do? A. Get some rest. B. Tidy up his room. C. Both of the above. Number twenty-five. Where did Mom find Billy's toy? A. Under his bed. B. On the sofa. C. In the laundry basket. Listen to the story about a girl named Annie. It was Annie's first day of school as a first grader. Mom drove her to school. After parking the car, Mom held Annie's hand and walked with her past the school gate. "I'm grown up now. Let go of my hand," said Annie. But Mom still held her hand very tight. Many children were going to school. They could arrive by bus, car, motorbike, and bike. No one walked to school. This is much bigger than my kindergarten in the village," Annie thought. When Mom and Annie reached the corridor, Mom let go of Annie's hand. Annie had to walk to her class alone. There were so many new people around her, and she started to feel nervous. It seemed Mom could read her mind. She looked at Annie and said, "Don't worry, dear. I'll be waiting for you at the school gate after school." Annie just took one step after another down the corridor. She kept looking back at her mom and didn't feel as grown up as before. Everyone was inside the classroom, and Annie was still at the door. The teacher came out and smiled at Annie. She seemed so friendly, and that made Annie feel safe when her mom was away. Now answer the questions. Number twenty-six. How did Annie get to school? A by bus, B by car, 
C. By bike. Number 27. When did mom let go of Annie's hand? A. When they reached the school gate. B. When they reached the corridor. C. When Annie walked into the classroom. Number 28. Why did Annie start to feel nervous? A. Because she felt grown up. B. Because her mom could read her mind. C. Because there were many new people around her. Number 29. Who helped Annie feel safe when her mom was away? A. Her new friend. B. Her teacher. C. Her principal. Listen to the teacher in biology class. You've probably seen a crow in real life. A crow's whole body is black. Even a crow's beak and legs are black. Crows generally live in... A. Only crow's legs are black. B. Crows can help clean the first grader. Mom drove her to school. After parking the car, Mom held Annie's hand and walked with her past the school gate. I'm grown up now. Let go of my hand, said Annie. But Mom still held her hand very tight. Many children were going to school. They could arrive by bus, car, motorbike, and bike. No one walked to school. This is much bigger than my kindergarten in the village, Annie thought. When Mom and Annie reached the corridor, Mom let go of Annie's hand. Annie had to walk to her class alone. There were so many new people around her, and she started to feel nervous. It seemed Mom could read her mind. She looked at Annie and said, Don't worry, dear. I'll be waiting for you at the school gate after school. Annie just took one step after another down the corridor. She kept looking back at her mom and didn't feel as grown up as before. Everyone was inside the classroom, and Annie was still at the door. The teacher came out and smiled at Annie. She seemed so friendly, and that made Annie feel safe when her mom was away. Now answer the questions. Number 26. How did Annie get to school? A. By bus. B. By car. C. By bike. Number 27. When did Mom let go of Annie's hand? A. When they reached the school gate. B. When they reached the corridor. C. When Annie walked into the classroom. Number 28. Why did Annie start to feel nervous? A. Because she felt grown up. B. Because her mom could read her mind. C. Because there were many new people around her. Number 29. Who helped Annie feel safe when her mom was away? A. Her new friend. B. Her teacher. C. Her principal. Listen to the teacher in biology class. You've probably seen a crow in real life. A crow's whole body is black. Even a crow's beak and legs are black. Crows generally live in trees. Sometimes they perch on electric poles or roofs when looking for food. Crows are omnivores. That means they eat both meat and plants. Specifically, they like to eat insects, grains, rotting meat, 
and rubbish. Crows help rid the environment of pollution caused by animal corpses and rubbish. Because they help clean the environment, they are beneficial birds. When crows are faced with danger, they make screaming sounds to warn their companions. Perhaps you didn't know that crows are emotional birds. They can show happiness, anger, and sadness. Besides this, they have excellent memories. A five year study by scientists at the University of Washington has found they have an unusually good memory. They can remember your face if it's linked to a stressful event. A female crow usually lays four to five eggs in the spring or summer. After about five weeks in the nest, the young birds begin learning how to fly and catch prey. Now answer the questions. Number 30. Where do crows live? A. In trees. B. On house roofs. C. In the ground. Number 31. What do crows eat? A. Meat and plants. B. Insects only. C. Grains and rubbish only. Number 32. Which of the following is true? A. Only crows' legs are black. B. Crows can help clean the environment. C. Crows have poor memory. Listen to the teacher in science class. Have you ever tossed a pebble into a lake or river? What happens? It always sinks, right? Have you ever wondered why the little pebble sinks while a huge boat made of metal floats on top? The size of an object isn't what matters. Density is actually what decides whether an object sinks or floats. Objects that are denser than water sink, and those less dense float. Hollow things often float because air is less dense. Than water. This is partly why huge, heavy ships float. A ship only sinks when water enters it. This forces out the air, making the average density of the ship greater than the water. Now answer the questions. Number 33. What happens when you toss a pebble into a lake? A. It floats. B. It sinks every time. C. It sinks sometimes. Number 34. What decides whether an object sinks or floats? A. Its density. B. Its size. C. Its color. Number 35. When does a ship sink? A. When it's made of metal. B. When water enters it. C. When it is big. Listen to the teacher in history class. Philo Taylor Farnsworth. Was an American inventor. He was born in Beaver, Utah, USA, in 1906. As a child, he was very interested in science and electricity and spent a lot of time learning about it. In 1923, while st- in science class, listen to the teacher in history class. 
Philo Taylor Farnsworth was an American inventor. He was born in Beaver, Utah, USA in 1906. As a child, he was very interested in science and electricity and spent a lot of time learning about it. In 1923, while still in high school, Farnsworth entered Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. However, his father died in 1924. Farnsworth had to leave Brigham Young and work to support his family while finishing high school. Farnsworth had to postpone his dream, but he kept working hard. When he was 20, Farnsworth started his own business. In 1927, he showed everyone his new idea, a way of sending pictures using electricity. In fact, it was the first true electronic TV. After many business problems, Farnsworth had success in 1938 when another company offered him $1 million for his idea. He may not be very famous these days, but as the father of the electric television, Farnsworth changed the world. He hoped television would help families and communities share stories. Now answer the questions. Number 36. Where was Farnsworth born? A. In Utah. B. In Colorado. C. In Virginia. Number 37. What did he like as a kid? A. Science. B. Science and electricity. C. Social sciences. Number 38. Which is true about Farnsworth? A. He didn't spend much time learning about science. B. He only had one business problem. C. He attended Brigham Young University. Number 39. Why was he said to have changed the world? A. Because he worked hard. B. Because he started a business at the age of 20. C. Because he was the father of the electronic television.